Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You, and in this video we're going to discuss what our objectives were uh, for converting the cargo trailer. And then the other will be, uh, we'll kind of mix in a, a recent trip to the Oregon coast and just to uh, give this some variety, so let's get to it. Where we are, you don't want to leave things out. If you leave an RV out here for more than a few seasons, it's toast. I mean, even one season. Um, I know people that will cover things with these uh, tarps and stuff. They last one season if they make it a season. Uh, they said it's 113 today. We had, I lost track, but we had 19 days of over 110. 19 consecutive days. We've had a lot more than 19 days over 110, but we had 19 consecutive days. So we get a lot of heat and, and up here because we're a rural area we don't have all the smog and stuff that they have say you know further south and so the sun here is really intense and it just bleaches and kills everything. So we need to store things that you want to last indoors. I happen to have the new trailer stored in a regular storage facility and uh, by the time you put the truck and trailer in there I use up uh, you know 98 percent of a 48 foot length long storage unit. So anyway that was a, a primary objective. Easy to store. You know, meaning that our, our our options for places to store this thing are better and we wanted to store the truck with it. I don't have enough garage space for all of my vehicles and so we like to store the truck and trailer uh, together. I don't use that Dodge truck that much except for towing trailers um, and so anyway I've got three trailers at home and that one's elsewhere. So easy to store park almost anywhere. When you're almost 60 feet long combined length like we were with the fifth wheel, you don't pull over just anywhere. You don't take just any off ramp. <laughs> you need to do your homework ahead of time. And uh, But with this 17 foot trailer, which was the, the I really wanted an 18. That was my, my, my desire was to have an 18 foot trailer. 18 foot trailers are not as uh, readily available as, um, as some of the other sizes. So this is actually a 16 foot trailer with a, a shallow V nose, so it's like 17 and a half feet, it's like an 18 inch V nose. But it's basically a 16 foot trailer as far as they just boxed it off. And so they basically come, you know, 12, 16, uh, 20, 24, those are the more common sizes. So anyway, ended up getting a 17 foot because that's what was available. Uh, that's what I was able to get new uh, without driving more than five hours one way. Blah, blah, blah. So that's, like I said, that 18 foot was the maximum I figured I could put in two parking spots with the length of my truck. And so that's what we went for. It allows me to park in, you know, a head to head uh, a parking spot and not be, in, you know, impeding traffic flow. Had to be self contained. So, one of the things uh, looking at regular RVs out there, they didn't have much in the way of solar. You could add it. They didn't have, you know, uh, you know, the battery space and capacity, you know, for, for batteries. Um, and so water tank size, you know, most of them have a black tank and a gray tank, everything. I didn't want to deal with a black tank anymore. I've done that all my life. I was tired of the black tank. And so the setup we went with allowed me to go with a larger uh, gray tank and freshwater tank than you normally find on that length of trailer. So we were looking as comparisons, we were looking at 22 foot 
and, and under um, factory produced RVs. And you're hard pressed to find one that's got 50 gallons of fresh water and 46 gallons of gray. That's what we have. We also, you know, have 800 watts of solar on the roof. And so that was another thing. I have room for 400 more watts if I want to put it up there. So, so I'd have a total of 1,200. But since I have 1,600 on the bed of the truck, I really don't need any more solar. Um, but I do have room for it want. So self-contained, solar-powered, good storage space. Um, we wanted to be able to go on, on, on longer trips and have you know plenty of storage space. That was one thing that we were really spoiled by on that fifth wheel. You could not fill that thing up. You take a look at the videos I did on that particular model. That thing had so much storage, unbelievable. <laughs> so we wanted as much storage as possible. So the design we built, we have a lot of space. We just went for 16 days to the Oregon coast thing was half empty as far as the amount of storage that we had available. Counter space. My, my wife likes a lot of counter space. That's how we went from uh, the, the, the bumper tow trailer we had before the fifth wheel is she wanted a larger bathroom and more counter space and a walk around bed. That, those were her the big three. And so um, we have good counter space in this one. We've got a six foot counter on one side and a three foot on the other. The three foot one's partially taken up uh, with the microwave. But uh, the other is that we have a four foot high table that we use that's adjustable height. And so you'll see in some of the photos, we can have it at a height for eating and playing games with it, or you can raise it up to counter height and she did some meal prepping and stuff while we were gone and it worked out perfect. She had more than enough counter space. In other words, I kind of wanted something kind of stealth. I wanted the ability to just park somewhere, I'm self-contained, spend the night and take off. And uh, you get up in the morning, take a shower, have breakfast and, and go. So just wanted that stealth aspect fit in a parking spot, can stay in a parking spot, we're not very conspicuous. There's, it doesn't look like a traditional RV. There's no steps hanging down. There's no air conditioning on top. It just, you know, the, the solar panels are pretty low. Um, it, yeah, not a lot to make you think, oh, they're sleeping in there. Uh, we wanted the queen size bed. That's what the fifth wheel had. That's lots of our recent trailers that had. It's what we have at home. We're used to a queen size bed. But, you know, on a small trailer, a queen size bed, you know, I talked about these 22 foot, uh, R, you know, factory produced RVs. Well, if they have a queen size bed in there, whammo, that eats up a lot of floor space. We have a standard queen size bed in there, but because it raises up and we've got the higher ceiling, so the bed goes up above, except for when we're sleeping. The rest of the time we have all that floor space available and it's, I'm not real tall, I'm 5'9", so I can walk underneath it no problem. So that was another objective. We wanted a comfortable bathroom. We have some friends that have a fifth wheel and it's amazing how small their bathroom is. Uh, in our fifth wheel, two people could get ready in the bathroom at the same time. It was a good sized bathroom. And so this one is not as big as that but it has plenty of room uh, to get dressed and do whatever else you want to do in there. Uh, it's got a nice shower. It's a 32 by 32 shower, so it's not a giant shower, but it's not small either. Uh, um, and then it's got a nice toilet. That Laveo dry flush toilet we love it. And it's no smell, no, you know, nothing nasty to deal with. It's just a really convenient, nice thing. 
um, it is a little more expensive than some of your other options. That's, to me, that's the only downside. Um, then the other was, you know, we wanted, to, you know, the self-contained. We wanted a seven-day minimum, and, and and I prefer, you know, a nine-day where you go from weekend to weekend. So like a Friday night to you know the next Sunday night, you know, the second Sunday, and we can do that comfortably with this trailer. Um, and we came up with a few ways we can actually uh, lengthen that because our only limitation is the, the water, your fresh water and your gray water. So we, we tried some things uh, and, and we actually didn't actually do them, but we tried them. In other words, what I'm getting at is like running the, the, the water to get it hot before you do dishes or you take a shower. Well, you run the water into a pitcher. Well, that water that went in the pitcher is not going into the gray tank and you can pour it back into your water tank. And so you save that half a gallon or whatever it might be. Um, that's one way. We tried that out, but we didn't put it back in the tank. <laughs> we just tossed it out. It's fresh water. We had plenty of water. Well, the, the, the water wasn't an issue for us at all. Um, but, you know, just, just little things like that that you can do that aren't really any hassle, but they will extend that that time so it was uh, and, and food that's the other thing we have these um, Bouge RV uh, refrigerators or freezer refrigerator we have one for each so we've got one that's on the door side of the trailer that's our freezer that's we set it at zero degrees that's for freezing stuff and then the little refrigerator section we can put refrigerated stuff in there also and then the other one uh, we use as just a refrigerator and then the little section that they have that doesn't get as cold we put things in there that we didn't want to get warm when you're traveling or whatever but they didn't have to be refrigerated we just wanted to stay cool so it worked out perfect and we basically uh, originally we're gonna go for seven days and so we packed like eight days worth of food and we still had plenty of room in both the freezer and the refrigerator. Matter of fact, probably half their freezer space was taken up with blue ice that I put in there for thermal density. Um, so, you know, water, power, and food. Greatest limitation for most people will be their, their gray water. Then security. So, We've got cameras, so I can see all around this trailer. Uh, we have an alarm system, so whether we're there or we're gone, it has an alarm system. And then I have a few other <laughs> tricks up my sleeve that I'm not sharing. But just remember, I have a degree in electronics technology. So you might let your mind wander down that path, but it's not a good idea to mess with my stuff. Let me just say that. And then last, but not least, easy to tow. You know, that big old fifth wheel, uh, when it would sit for a few months during the winter, and if I was in the warehouse and you see that thing, it was intimidating just to look at it. The thing was huge. <laughs> it's like, I tow that thing? You know, I mean, from the mirror on the cab of the truck to the end of that trailer was 50 feet. You know, it's like, holy cow, that's a long way back there for, you know, old eyes. But we did. We towed it all over the place and on some roads that people couldn't believe I towed the thing on. But when you've been towing all your life, you know, like I said, looking at it was intimidating. Once you're behind the wheel and you're rolling, it's it pretty much all just, uh, uh, you know, habit. But going with a trailer, instead of being eight and a half foot wide, is only eight foot wide. It's amazing how much more of a, a view you have or, or how much easy it is to see around you, uh, whether you just be going down the road or parking. Um, the old Dodge that I have, it's an O2 Dodge, you know, four-wheel drive. 
they don't go straight. And uh, that's not a problem until you get on a really narrow road or there's road construction. Then I tell you what, that six inch difference, it, it, it means a lot as far as the, the pucker factor and the relaxation factor. Uh, just being narrower like that really makes it more comfortable to tow. Um, and then, uh, you know, being shorter, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's less than half the length of what I had before. So it's just easy to tow, easy to tow. And of course that old Dodge, uh, it doesn't even know it's back there. So, yeah. I mean, it hardly noticed the fifth wheel. I mean, it's a, it's a beast of a tow machine. Um, but you had to remember that it was back there. You had to remember it was 13 feet high. This one's only 10 feet high. You know, you can go into a regular gas station and so forth instead of having to hit the truck stops. Um, so those were our main objectives um, for the uh, cargo trailer conversion build. Now... The Oregon Coast trip. Are we still in the frame? Yes, we are. It was a last minute decision. Like I said, we were putting up with 100 plus degree temperatures and lots of days, 110 plus degrees. And my wife and I decided, let's go to the Oregon Coast where it is, instead of a uh, 105 or 115 it's 65 so it was to get out of the valley heat and it was a last minute decision I don't know we kind of talked about it four or five days before we were actually over there camping so last minute reservations and all that uh, I don't like to go and do the first come first serve thing um, uh, my wife really doesn't like to do that I'm, I'm a little more flexible but we kind of like to know what we're doing and we don't have to drive around and hunt and hope and all that stuff. So we, we planned for a week, seven days. And so like I said, we packed food and clothes and all that for, you know, eight days, always have at least an extra day. And usually, you know, eight days means that she's got enough for two weeks. But anyway, that's what the original plan was. We were over there, it was so nice and you're sucking up that, you know, mid-60s weather, and you're like, you know, you look at the forecast back home, it was going to be 116 the day that we were going to go back. We're like, nah. Well, let's, uh, let's extend the trip. So we ended up staying 16 days, and uh, so we, we, we did a food run and uh, did the laundromat thing, and... Uh, all was good. The other thing was this was a good test for the trailer's roadworthiness. The shakedown cruise we did, we didn't go round trip 40 miles from home. And so it was, uh, you know, the purpose of that trip was to, to make sure everything worked and make sure we felt comfortable in there, make sure my wife didn't feel claustrophobic in the trailer, all that kind of thing. That was the intent of that shakedown cruise. So this was the first trip that we took with the trailer, where we spent, you know, we only spent three nights in it, in that shakedown cruise. So this was, you know, a chance to really put the ta trailer through its uh, paces. And, and by roadworthiness, you know, when you drive hundreds of miles on the interstate and you're hitting check holes and we went over the Siskiyous and you're up mountains, down mountains, and then the drive from the valley over the coast windy road up and down you really get to shake things up and see what stays where and and uh, see if those uh, you know off the shelf cabinets that I bought and everything uh, you know would uh, would stay together good news everything worked fine worked really great um, so now we've had this trailer and on this trip this one trip we we're in the trailer with a temperature range from 50 to 100 degrees. On the way back, uh, when we stopped in Canyonville, 
they had a high of a hundred and something that day. When we got there that evening, it was still a hundred degrees. So we cranked the old air conditioning on, and uh, and then we had some 50 and 52 degree mornings when we were over the coast. So we used a heater to take the chill off in the morning. My wife was really impressed at how quickly it brought it up to, you know, uh, 72 degrees or whatever inside. Uh, but what was a particular challenge was, you know, like I said, we went over there for seven days and then we extended the trip. Well, kind of the next week that we're extending to was the 4th of July week. 4th of July was on a Thursday. So we're going, I think we came back that following Tuesday. And so that made uh, reservations and finding a place a little more difficult. So we actually stayed in three different places. And one of the places we stayed there twice. We spent one night there, <laughs> and then five nights later, we spent five nights there. <laughs> so it, it, it required a little bit of, uh, of um, finessing, but all worked good. We really enjoyed the places where we stayed. I'll include a few, few random pictures. But with this 16-day experience, I came up with some pros and cons related to that specific trip. And one was that everything worked well in the trailer, so I uh, was real happy about that. The con was that most of the places where we were, we didn't have cell service. We're in a remote area of the Oregon coast with uh, lots of trees and, and varied terrain, and so, you know, cell service is lying of sight. And uh, so most places we didn't have cell service. The weather was great. We had uh, a light rain one night, the first week we were there, but it was just at night. Um, and that was it. The rest of the time it was just nice weather. We had, uh, you know, partly cloudy skies, you know, sometimes, but for the most part it was blue, blue skies and uh, mild temperatures. Uh, like I said, the downside was the 4th of July. There was a lot of people uh, in the area, but basically where we hung out, we avoided the crowds. Another pro was uh, Oregon has much lower fuel costs than California, so that part was nice. But small town that we got the groceries in, we had higher food costs. But we were only shopping for a week, so or a little more than a week, wasn't a big deal. Oregon has nice state parks. So the con on this was that out of state <laughs> visitors pay an extra 25%. Now I don't have anything against that. I think California should do that. But uh, but you know, I was on the receiving end this time of having to pay an extra 25%. But it's still uh, the places where we stayed, the sites that we had, uh, I, I felt good about it. We had, um, the sites had water and electric. And so I don't have mine set up uh, for city water connection. Uh, we can fill the, the tank, which we didn't uh, need to. and. We didn't fill up the tank till uh, shortly before we left, and um, but we did plug into the electric, which means we left the hot water heater on all the time. The yeah, the the water heater on all the time. Uh, where normally, if I was uh, off grid, I would only turn the water heater on when I ne needed it, and uh, it takes about 20 minutes for it to get up the temperature. So if you're doing dishes and stuff, you may run it a half hour a day. You're taking showers and everything. You might run it at the most an hour a day. Um, and so this, we just left it on all the time. Um, the refrigerators, uh, we could have run off AC, the, the freezer refrigerator, but they're set to run on 12 volts. And it's because they have a plug that you plug in for 12 volts, and if you want to run an AC, you have to unplug that plug and plug in the AC plug. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Never had this happen. The SD card 
and the battery ran out at the exact same time. So it just, <laughs> it just shut out. <laughs> anyway, I was saying about the uh, refrigerator and, and freezer, I run them off 12 volts uh, just because I've got them tucked in the corner there and it's just not convenient to, to swap the plugs. Although I've got them set up there and, and, and I, could, I could easily, uh, easily, I could plug them in. I just choose not to. They're, you know, uh, 60 watts a piece, uh, but they don't run continuously. So, and I've got a huge battery pack. I got over 16.5 kilowatt hours of storage. So I just, you know, so, you know, the cameras, the refrigerator and the freezer, um, and a few other things, they're running all the time in the background. And, uh, and because of the amount of solar I have, not a problem, just not a problem. And so those things, whether I'm plugged into shore power or not, they run off 12 volts and they're running off my battery. Now, if I'm plugged into shore power, the microwave, the water heater, um, the induction cooktop, uh, those things, you know, just run off the shore power at that point. They don't have to run off the inverter. And if I needed to charge my batteries, my inverter has a built-in charger and I flip a switch and it can charge the batteries while I'm plugged into shore power. Like I said, not necessary because of the solar. But if there was a situation where you weren't getting enough solar and you had shore power, there's another option for you. And again, one of the things about this setup is if I'm somewhere and there's no shore power and I do need, you know, um, more power, my, my battery pack's getting low, uh, then I can just fire up my little uh, gas-powered inverter and all as well. But uh, don't normally carry that with me unless I'm anticipating going to be gone for a long time, going to be off grid for an extended period of time, that would be an issue. So lots of options, that's what I like. And so to sum things up, we had a great trip to the Oregon coast, one of our favorite places to go. Um, and then the trailer build worked good. I had some anxiety about it. You know, I've never done this before. I did it in a somewhat unorthodox way where I use these cabinets, you know, from a big box store, and they're particle board, they're heavy, uh, and the trailer is heavy. It's a 7,000 pound GVWR, and we're within, you know, fully loaded, we're within a few hundred pounds of that. And so, I just didn't know how it was all gonna, you know, work out. Uh, I upgraded the tires uh, to some you know, good tires, just because I didn't want to take chances. I went to I went to a better quality tire, and I went to the next load range up. And so, try to stack the deck in my favor, uh, because that size of trailer, that's 7,000 pounds, that's what they normally come as. The other thing that was of concern is just the trailer build itself. And I'm going to continue to, to monitor it. I When I got back, I was underneath there with a couple lights and checked everything um, to make sure everything looked okay. Everything looked okay. But, you know, they build these things so poorly. And in one or more of my videos about the build, especially when we were stripping out all of the, the innards uh, at the very beginning there, and you saw what poor jobs they did with the welding um, and just how light and cheap these things are made. I mean, a good 50% of the screws that I screwed through the walls into those metal uh, uh, tabs stripped out because the metal is so, th so thin. And I had gone to a, a different screw that had you know more threads per square inch to help get some bite, but it just, they're, they're poorly made. Uh, for the most part. And uh, if you want to know more about the trailer and how it was made, check out you know one of the early 
videos on that build. But anyway, so I have concerns. And, uh, but the way I built it, I did things so that they were in it lock and I kind of, you know, tried to stack the deck in my favor so this thing stands the test of time. But there's no better test than the test of time. Next trip should be uh, Washington State and uh, I might share it and I might not. <laughs> I yammered way too long in this video so I'll let you go. See you next time.